Five people were shot and killed, several more injured, at a newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland this afternoon. New information is coming into Fox, some of it confusing. We're sorting it out. We also expect an update from the police in the next few minutes, and we'll take you there live when that happens. But first, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. There was an ideological revolution on the left this week, and hardly anybody noticed it. For months, you may have noticed, members of the progressive fringe have been calling for abolishing ICE. That's the agency responsible for enforcing our immigration laws. That's not a mainstream position, obviously, and Democratic leaders seemed embarrassed by it. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer opposed the idea. So did many others. And then everything changed. Two days ago, a self-described socialist called Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez unexpectedly won a Democratic primary in New York. Ocasio-Cortez ran on abolishing ICE. Suddenly, in days, getting rid of ICE is something many Democrats say they are for. Now, midterm elections are approaching, so it's time for the rest of us to take this idea seriously. What exactly would happen if the left killed ICE? Well, here's some of the facts about ICE. ICE is responsible for all immigration enforcement within the United States. Last year, ICE arrested 32,958 illegal immigrants with criminal records. Almost 5,000 of those were members of violent gangs. Without ICE, all of those criminals would still be at large within our borders. Last year, ICE also seized 2,370 pounds of fentanyl. That's the narcotic that is driving the single deadliest drug crisis in the history of this country. That's enough fentanyl to kill every single American citizen by overdose. Without ICE, that fentanyl would still be in circulation. And, of course, ICE is also the body responsible for deporting anybody illegally inside the United States. Last year, ICE removed more than 226,000 people who broke American law. ICE did that because ICE is the only agency we have to do it. Without ICE, criminal aliens could stay in this country with impunity. That would include gang members, drug smugglers, child molesters, convicted murderers. They could not be deported. Companies, meanwhile, could bring in an unlimited number of illegal workers. That would crash wages for American citizens, even more than it already has. It would be a disaster. But it's the point. The campaign against ICE is a campaign for open borders. And some are honest enough to admit that. During protests against the administration, activists have chanted this, no borders, no nations, stop the deportations. No borders, no nations. One leads to the other, always. Without borders, nations are impossible. If we passed a law tomorrow allowing strangers to live in your house, would it still be your house? No, it would not be. It would be everybody's house. Soon, it would be nobody's house. That's the left's plan for America. Finally, they are saying it out loud. Uh, so before we went to the press conference, we were telling you about a political development that is really reshaping the ideological landscape on the left. Parts of the progressive fringe have been arguing for months now that we ought to abolish ICE. That has not been a mainstream position among Democrats. Suddenly, thanks to a Democratic primary on Tuesday, it is. Abolish ICE. Democrats are now saying that in growing numbers. Hamanth Gundavaram is co-director of the Immigrant Justice Clinic at Northeastern University. I think he agrees with that sentiment, and so we wanted to talk to him about it. He joins us tonight. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank so, you for having me, Tucker. Um, as, as I said in, in the script at the beginning of the show, this is not something that, that I have taken seriously, that I think most people watching have taken seriously, abolish mm -hmm. ICE. Now I think we have an obligation to take it seriously. So I'd like to ask you what it would mean. ICE arrests thousands, many thousands of criminal aliens, illegal aliens in our country who have committed felonies and been convicted of them every year. And if there was no ICE, they would not be arrested. That would be bad, wouldn't it? Well, we existed as a country for you know hundreds of years before ICE came along 15 years ago. So it, I think the issue is that ICE has just gotten too big. Um, let me give you some statistics. Um, ICE has a yearly budget now of $6 billion. The family separation policy um, from President Trump is about is expected to cost an extra $2 billion. Um, so ICE was not created to be this big. ICE was created to focus on national security and terrorism, and now people are being arrested who have not committed crimes, people are being arrested who have committed nonviolent crimes. Um, so ICE is really straying from its original purpose. So the idea of okay, well, abolishing well, let, let, let it me is, say something, something else will come along to take Everything is bigger than it was. Oh, okay, so that's the hope that something else, quote, something else will come along. 
But in the meantime, you have thousands and thousands and thousands of actual criminals who are here illegally, not people whose only crime is being here, but people who have committed felonies, child molestation, murder, lots of drunk drivers, and without ICE, they don't get arrested. Does that bother you? The ACLU says that 90% um, of criminal arrests by ICE are for nonviolent crimes. So when President Trump okay, ran but, for okay, office, okay, he okay, said wait, that he wait, was going to go on, after the, the bad hombres, the big okay, criminals. Okay, but, but without ICE, we don't arrest anybody. So look, I understand that you think that ICE does more than it should. I get it. And that's a real debate, and we should have it. But getting rid of and ICE And you're for small, you're for small government, that, right? I don't know. I guess in some cases I'm for protecting the country that I was born in, that I'm not leaving America. And without ICE, you have actual criminals going unpunished, roaming free of thousands of pounds of fentanyl that would be on the streets. Can you at least acknowledge that those are real concerns? That's not a small thing, is it? Those are concerns. But again, there were 20 agencies that handled different things that ICE handled. Now ICE is so big that the president has power with these six billion dollars and asking for two more billion dollars potentially to use ICE as his own police force. And that means that there can okay, be so, rampant but, abuse but about how you use ICE. You're the one calling ICE. for getting rid of, uh, I understand. And by the way, I, mm -hmm. I think we disagree on everything, but I do agree with you that federal agencies do sure things we do. they weren't created to do. And I'm against that. So I'm sympathetic to your point there, but getting rid of the agency leaves you in the position of having to explain specifically who will arrest the illegal aliens who are also rapists and murderers. And there are actually a lot of them. Not all people here legally are, obviously, but there are still a lot of felons a very, who are here legally. A very so small percentage. Who, but the numbers are high, right? The percentage is small, I agree, but the aggregate number is big. It's thousands and thousands there, of people. There were, so who there arrests were them, who deports them? But there were agencies, okay, smaller there. agencies before that would, I think first we just have to, you're sort of asking for a solution, but I think first we need to agree that ICE is a problem and the fact that it's six billion dollars, that it's, you know, uh, it's going after people, that it shouldn't be going after, it was really intended okay, to be created no, by you're national you're, security. I'm sorry, I don't want to terrorism. interrupt you, but you're missing the point. People are calling for eliminating the agency. So let's say that happens tomorrow. The Democratic mm -hmm. left, you get your wish, and ICE is gone, and there's an illegal alien who's been busted for drunk driving. Should he be deported? Simple question. Should people who are here illegally who get busted for DUI, should they be deported? Uh, that's, we have to sort of, I think what we have to do is think about abolishing ICE and then How creating the something question? else. I think. What was the question again? Well, should someone, and the question is, should an illegal alien busted for drunk driving be deported? Uh, that's too vague of a question. I mean, the criminal justice system. No, it's a very specific question. Crimes. No, no, it's a very specific question. The criminal, oh, no, no, but, but the criminal justice system. You deal system. with immigration for a living. No, I'm I asking, do. what do you think we should do? Because we're at a moment where we're remaking. It's a revolution. We're remaking everything mm. anew. Well, let's get rid of ICE. Okay. So, what are the new rules? I get. I'm here illegally. I get busted for DUI. Should I be deported? Very simple. Do you that think person an illegal alien busted for DUI should be deported? Immigration law is very complicated, Tucker. That person could have an asylum claim. They could have many different types of reasons why they might be able oh. to stay in the United States beyond their DUI. The criminal justice system can handle crimes, right? I mean, American citizens. Uh -huh. But no commit one is going to, go to deport jail. illegal aliens who commit crimes without ICE. So you're saying they should all be allowed to stay D here are you saying with their before, asylum claims? Are you saying before? I'm saying if you're here illegally and get busted no one, for a crime, leave. But are you saying yeah. before 2003, I'm sorry, they're barking no at me. One... I've got to go. Okay. Thank you, Tucker. No, I mean, we. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you'll come back. I, I want to know what this means because it's freaking sure. me out. I'd love to come back. Well, thank increase. You,